Welcome to the John and Heidi Show podcast. John and Heidi. Here's John and Heidi. Today is a special day, Heidi. Do you know what today is? What is today, John? I thought you'd never ask. It's Monday, the 12th day of November. Today is National French Dip Day. It's National uh, National Pizza with the Works Except Anchovies Day and National Chicken Soup for the Soul Day. I love those books. Chicken Soup for the Soul books. Oh, I love I those. I do love French dips. Oh, yeah. See, I like and that, pizza. too. I do. I've got a quote here from Bonnie Girdle. She says, the longer you're in the game, the hotter you are. I agree. And I've got a Movie Star Monday guest. Nice. I'm going to talk with Joni Beauville. She was on some soap operas. She's on several TV shows. She's been in several movies. And when you hear her and we get a chance to talk, you're going to probably go, oh, I remember her. And if you don't, you can click on the link in our show notes. You'll see a picture. Gorgeous young lady, a great career ahead of her, and we're super excited to chat with her. It's all on the way on this Movie Star Monday. Thank you for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Want to honor a veteran? Consider giving to Veterans Tickets Foundation, a national nonprofit who supports our currently serving military, veterans, and family members of those we've lost in action by providing them with free tickets to sporting events, concerts, performing arts, and family activities. VetTix is dedicated to giving back to those who gave us so much. Learn how you can help at VetTix.org. VetTix, T-I-X dot O-R-G. Time now for Is It a Golf Course or Is It a Rehab Center? I'm over here trying to cover the screen so Heidi can't cheat because this is where I ask her, Heidi, <laughs> this real place that I'm telling you about, is it a golf course or is it a rehab center? Westbridge, Manchester, New Hampshire. Westbridge. Would that be a golf course or a rehab center? Rehab center? And the answer is rehab center. Woo! Good job, Heidi. You get a golf <laughs> clap even though it's not a golf course today. This has been Is It a Golf Course or Is It a Rehab Center? We're getting to the time of year where we start planning for holiday parties and other events that often include alcohol. I encourage you to have some alcohol-free options as well. And if you are drinking, be sure to have a designated driver. If you or someone you know has a problem with drugs or alcohol, there is help. Timeforrehab.com would love to connect you with someone who can be there for you or that loved one. If you feel like it's time to finally get the help you need, we're here for you. Timeforrehab.com. That's timeforrehab.com. And this is your brain on drugs. An Alabama man who reportedly broke a meth pipe while being chased by police is facing a felony charge of tampering with evidence. Says here 46-year-old Roscoe Covington of Center, Alabama, arrested Wednesday after a a short foot chase. He ran from officers who approached him at a business and said that he was seen throwing away two glass pipes containing suspected methamphetamines. Uh, One of the pipes shattered. He's charged with felony possession of meth, felony tampering with evidence, two counts of possession, drug-related objects, a misdemeanor, obstruction of officers, and a partridge in a pear tree. (laughs) Man, a lot of stuff there. So uh, it's a bad idea. But you know what? That is what happens when your brain is on drugs. Now, big screen, little screen, brought to you by ChannelSurferTV.com. I haven't watched this show in a long time. I'm going to see if I get it right here. Um, Heidi, the answer, no. Yeah, the answer is he just signed his new contract through 2022. I don't know who we're talking about. The, the question is, who is Alec Trebek? Oh. Is it Alec or Alex? Oh, Alex. Alex. I always say Alec. Why do I say that? I thought he was leaving. Well, Alex Trebek is sticking around on Jeopardy, at least for a few more years. Alex New Deal will keep him dropping clues through the 21-22 television season. So 2021. Yeah. I thought I had, didn't we just read something not too long ago? I thought that said so. he was retiring and yeah. they were looking at, I Apparently can't they were who wrong. they were thinking of to he, take his place. He, he must not have kept enough of his dough stashed. It's like, <laughs> yeah, I think after, after going through and counting what I have here. <laughs> Stick I'll stick around, around through 20, 21, 22. <laughs> it's funny to say that because it's 2021 and then also 2022, mm-hmm. but they have it listed here, the 2021, 22 season. It sounds like that's three numbers in a row. Right. It's really just two. This has been Big Screen, Little Screen. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Every day, approximately 23 U.S. military veterans take their own lives. 
Big Paws Canine Foundation is helping to decrease that number, providing service and companion dogs to our disabled veterans and first responders injured in the line of duty. Partnering a hero with a specifically trained dog significantly reduces the incidence of suicide, and your support makes all the difference. Find out how you can help our American heroes. Join the pack at BigPawsCanine.com. Now, your scoop of the day brought to you by FreshPatch.com, promo code radio. Hawaii's state Supreme Court has given approval for the building of a huge, giant telescope on a Hawaiian mountain. So, you know, for those of you going sunbathing in Hawaii, <laughs> if you see that telescope pointing down, <laughs> it's, it's to look at the stars. That's what it's for. I wonder if on is on a mountain, not yeah. on a volcano. <laughs> well. I doubt that they'd build it on a volcano, but I guess I haven't read the story completely. Sounds like a Dr. Evil plan. Dr. Evil. I, just, build a, I was just thinking, what if the volcano erupts? But I think a you said mountain, beam. not volcano. Going to build a laser? No, not a laser. A giant that would make telescope more sense. On a mountain in Hawaii. <laughs> So, yeah, it says Hawaii State Supreme Court given approval for the building of a huge telescope on a Hawaiian mountain, not a volcano. All right. Mountain. Most people drink coffee first thing in the morning, but you know what? Is that the right way to do it? If you've ever had coffee and then felt like it didn't work for you, you might be running into the field of chronopharmacology. It's a study of how medications and drugs interact with your biology. I'll skip the boring parts and get to the the most important thing, the caffeine It says, in the morning, your coffee will probably be the most effective if you enjoy it between 9.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. In the afternoon, it is precise to uh, the precise optimal time for coffee in the afternoon, Heidi, would be at 2.16 p.m. (laughs) They came down to an exact minute. Wow. (laughs) 2.16. Not 2.17. You'll be in trouble. Hey, what are you doing? You're doing it wrong. (laughs) Don't even know how to drink coffee right (laughs) So 9.30 to 11.30 in the morning, there's a two-hour window, but the afternoon is a one-minute window. 2.16. <laughs> and you better drink it fast because you've got to be done. I think the person doing this study, <laughs> they just wanted to be able to take time at 2.16 for whatever. I don't know what's going on What about on at there. night? Is it- doesn't say. Hmm. Doesn't say anything about that. But it says 9.30, between 9.30 and 11.30 in the morning, 2.16 in the afternoon. Because I the- like a cup of coffee, like after... Yeah, you know, if you're doing dessert somewhere or something, I like coffee. Absolutely, I do too. And scrolling through social media, it has become increasingly common to hear that millennials have, quote, ruined things. We just had a conversation with our son, who happens to be a millennial, had a conversation with him the other day where he got really upset because somebody had worn a costume for Halloween Mm. that was like poking fun at his generation. Now, here's the thing. Our son is not a typical millennial, not even close, Uh, but... He, gets, he was defending his generation. And I, I think I'm kind of proud of the kid for that. That's pretty cool. But scrolling through social media, you hear all the time how millennials are, you know, ruining things. Everything from home ownership to the 40-hour work week. And department stores are closing because of millennials. Well, here's the thing. Guess what the latest thing is that r- millennials are ruining, Heidi? Mm. Divorce. I'm on board with this one. A University of Maryland study shows between 2008 and 2016, divorce rates dropped 18%. That is really cool. And here's why. They say because millennials are staying together. And it's about probably cultural and societal shifts, according to a quote from Lisa Schubing. She's a licensed marriage and family therapist. She says experts, uh, or I guess not, this is no longer her saying, it says experts say that's likely because millennials are getting married older than earlier generations did. And I have noticed that. There are a lot of people who they don't get married. Like, I got married when I was very young. You got married when you were very young. Then we both got divorced. And then we both got married mm-hmm. again when we were a little older. You were 26, I was 25. Here's the thing. I was stupid, and I married the wrong person. So that's I. why I got divorced. Because our generation was dumb, Heidi. <laughs> But (laughs) the generations before us got married much younger and their divorce rate was much, much lower. Yeah, that's true. So So, and here's the cynical side of me. Surprise, surprise. Yeah. These millennials are too young to have already gotten divorced. How are they figuring that into these divorce rates? Well, the uh, if they just got married a year ago, good for you. You're still married. Yay. So let's check back in a few years, you're saying? Right. I'm saying give it a couple of years. Can you, can you let them relish in the <laughs> limelight for a minute, Heidi? Wow. Thanks for listening to The John and Heidi Show. Are you trying to find the perfect gift for someone with a good sense of humor? FunkyMonkeyShirts.com has a good selection of funny t-shirts and more. Some with Christmas themes. 
One that even replaces the ugly Christmas sweater for your next party. Find some silly shirts at FunkyMonkeyShirts.com. Also, learn how you can sell your own designs to make some extra Christmas cash. There's a link at the bottom of the page at FunkyMonkeyShirts.com. FunkyMonkeyShirts.com. That's FunkyMonkeyShirts.com. Thank you so much for listening on another Movie Star Monday. We have Joni Boville joining us right now, and she's from Mississippi, but nowadays you'll find her out in Hollywood as she's making movies and doing TV shows and R- Young and the Restless and uh, How to Get Away with Murder and Bosch, and you got a movie that just came out earlier this year, Come Sunday. How cool is that to, to be able to you know sit down and watch a movie, and, and there you are in the movie? That's got to be kind of fun, doesn't it? It actually is pretty cool, John. It's, at first, I was kind of like, hiding my eyes and slowly moving my hand down to see how good or bad I thought it would look. <laughs> but it's okay now, and it is cool to, to see, kind of looking back and seeing the final product. You finished the project. That is really neat. And I'm, I'm looking on the list here. I see Star Trek Odyssey. we got to make sure we say that as well, because I know there's some Trekkies that are listening that if I don't mention that, we'll be in trouble, won't we? <laughs> yeah, but here's the thing. I want I always have to clarify that. When people see Star Trek Odyssey on my resume, it is it is not the huge blockbuster Star Trek that we know and love. It is it was a fan love a fan lovers project. Nice. It was a fan produced project, but still there are a lot. They have their own following as well. So yeah, it's cool that you mentioned it. But I just want I always like to clarify so people don't think I'm claiming something that I didn't really do. Well, that's cool. And it's cool that you even uh, made sure you, you, you separated the two. But uh, now you've, yeah. got a, you've got a program, NCIS, uh, that you're on just recently. Is that right? Yeah. I had a great opportunity to work with the cast and crew on NCIS this last week. I auditioned for it and then um, got to hang out at Paramount Studios with the entire cast for the table read and shot my episode last week. That was a lot of fun nice people. It always makes the job go a lot smoother. It makes you love it. Wish you were there more often. But that was a great experience. And um, that, like I said, it just shot, so that episode hasn't even aired yet. Probably, I'm guessing it'll probably air in maybe in a month or so. Stay tuned. Absolutely. We'll be looking for that. Now, one of the things that I think is re- kind of neat, as I look through your resume and see some of the different parts that you've had a chance to play, you've been a doctor, you've been a nurse, you've been a judge, You've had, you know, a lot of a lot of opportunities to play people that are, you know, very powerful. So I think that says a lot about who you are as a person. If they look at you and say, "This, this right here, this is somebody who could who could be a judge, or this is somebody that could be a doctor, or this is somebody that could yeah. be the, the head nurse." So, uh, how do you prepare yourself for a role when you you have to pretend to be a doctor or a nurse or a judge? I tell you, it's actually um, kind of interesting you ask that because. Well, I'm going to answer it in two ways. Because my husband is an actor as well. His name's Kirk Oville. And we laugh all the time because I get the professional jobs like doctor, lawyer, judge, nurse. And he gets psycho, crazy, killer, redneck guy. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's just so funny. And he's so the opposite of that in real life. So um, I just wanted to mention that because it's, so, it's just so interesting to me how actors get cast against Totally opposite of what they are in real life. But um, to answer your question, how I prepare, I, I research everything. I, I always research, especially if it's a show that, or, that I haven't been watching, obviously for TV. I, if I haven't been watching that show regularly, I'll go and watch a few episodes to get the feel of it, to get to know the characters, the pace of the show, and that kind of thing. And then um, if it's, say, for instance, a doctor, and they're using a lot of big medical terminology that doesn't just flow off the tongue, I just rehearse, 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 and um, until those, and, until if I feel like I've been, I do this every day. So just a lot of prep time and research, and just being and making it and becoming that character, and not acting like you're that character. And you've got NCIS. What role do you play in the in the the show that'll be coming here fairly soon to the big screen or to the uh, the little screen? I will be playing uh, a TSA agent. So. Be on the lookout for that. Once again, another person with a lot of power. That that means you're a powerful young I lady. I know, right? I'm glad that the casting people see that 
see that in me. You know, I'm glad. That, I love getting those kinds of roles, actually. Again, uh, visiting with Joni Bovel, and she has uh, a movie that's actually just come out recently, uh, earlier this year. And let's talk a little bit about that as well, Come Sunday. Now, what, what happens in the movie Come Sunday, and, and you know, what, what can we expect when we watch that film? Yeah, okay, so Come Sunday, it just came out earlier this year, and um, it's a drama film. It's based on, I don't know if you know this name, but Bishop Carlton Pearson, he basically was excommunicated from his church, and um, and it was based on an episode. It's originally a public radio series called This American Life, which talked about him, and he's an evangelical who was ostracized by his own church because of some um, enlightened beliefs that he had. And it tells that story. And in it, I play um, a real life, talking about preparing for characters, I think it's even harder when you prepare for people who are real, people who are still living and breathing, and you have to portray them. I played Yvette Flunder, who is um, a, she's a pastor up in Oakland, California today, and she started a church that is predominantly for people of the LGBTQ and whatever other letters come after that community. And I played her because she didn't see eye to eye with Bishop Pearson in the beginning. Then after his ostracizing, he had he came to see a new way and then they she was one of the first people to put her arm around him and invite him to her church and it talked about how they're, they resolve things and just uh, beliefs and uh, like spiritual beliefs and how people. Um, they, one was teaching inclusivity and one was not, but then they came to see eye to eye. So it's quite an interesting story, and it's a personal story, and it's a real story. So I love the true stories when it's yeah. something that's based on something that really happened, and a lot of the time there's yeah. such a lesson that's involved. And I think that's really cool. Exactly. Again, our guest today for Movie Star Monday, Joni Bovel. Joni, thank you so much for taking time to chat with us. Thank you so much for taking the time to call me. Absolutely. And we're going to throw a link in our show notes to find Joni online. And again, uh, you may remember her from The Young and the Restless. You might remember her from some of the other great uh, TV shows that she's been on. Bosch, she's uh, got a, a recurring role on that. Uh, some of the other fun things that we've talked about here, uh, like the movie that just came out earlier this year, come Sunday, uh, we're going to throw a link to make it easy to find her online, and we'll do that in the show notes at johnandheidyshow.com. John and Heidi. If you want to grow your business, you can add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers or a combination of both. There's no other way to grow your business. Just those two. Add more customers or sell more stuff to your current customers. And if you already have a relationship with your customers and you have their email address, you can reach out to them with special offers to easily grow your sales and you'll make your customers even happier. Let the experts at Constant Contact help. Get a free trial now. Text Radio Trial to number 22828. That's Radio Trial, all one word, to number 22828. John! Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? The story you've probably heard about lemmings jumping off a cliff to their death <laughs> I have not is heard fake. this story. <laughs> oh, lemmings, yeah. There's a story about the, that they were so dumb they jumped off a cliff to their death. Well, that's fake. That's not a true story. <laughs> yeah, I never heard that story. You, so. you, you want another one? I kind of feel like you, you deserve a better. <laughs> okay. Fun fact for you, Heidi. What's that, John? Anxious travelers can play with mini horses at a Kentucky airport. So if you uh, you know are anxious and you're traveling through Kentucky, you can play with many horses at their airport. That's kind of cool. Thanks for listening to a couple of fun facts today on the John and Heidi Show. Freshpatch.com is making dogs like me happy. They send out real grass pads for us to use indoors. Now when it's cold outside, I can go inside. And when I've used up the real grass patch, the mailman brings me a new fresh patch. It's the best idea since doggy treats. Convince your mommy to try it today. I suggest you try puppy dog eyes. Freshpatch.com. Use promo code radio to save 10%. That's freshpatch.com. Promo code radio. Time now for today's weird word, and it is Farago. Farago. What do you think Farago is, Heidi? I have no idea. What is Farago? It kind of sounds like a car to me, doesn't it? Like an Italian car. It could be a car. It's like a, uh, he was driving a fancy red Farago. Ooh, that does sound nice. Okay. No, it's not. It's not the car. It's a confused mixture, an assortment or medley or a conglomeration, a Farago. So if there's a whole lot of stuff all just jammed together for no particular reason, it's a bit of a Farago. 
That's what it is. Okay. And that is today's really weird, grandiloquent word. Want to honor a veteran? Consider giving to Veterans Tickets Foundation, a national nonprofit who supports our currently serving military, veterans, and family members of those we've lost in action by providing them with free tickets to sporting events, concerts, performing arts, and family activities. VetTix is dedicated to giving back to those who gave us so much. Learn how you can help at VetTix.org. VetTix, T I X, dot O R G. Now, from the Weird News file, we find this story. Police in North Carolina say a puppy sniffed out a crime, helping then avert a possible tragedy. This happened about a month ago. Uh, This was emailed to me. And again, I decided like three, four days ago, I'm going to dig through my email and read all these stories that people have sent to me. Thank you guys for sending them. And I'm sorry it has taken me so long to get to them. But we have so much stuff going on. I mean, we always have things, always have things that are in the news, and there's always fun stories to talk about, so I'm going to try to get to these in a more timely fashion. But this happened a little while back. A pit bull puppy dug up a fully loaded 38 Special Revolver. This happened in Greenville, North Carolina. The gun was wrapped in a T-shirt, and Ryder's owner, that's the dog, uh, they called police when it was discovered. Officers safely unloaded the weapon, and now it's stored at the police department evidence room. Ryder is credited with keeping the gun from falling into the wrong hands. According to police, they say... There may be some freelance work in the future for this puppy. It says, nice. we have our people call your people. <laughs> They're posted on nice. social media. So I think it's a cool story. Good job, writer. Uh, again, really fun story. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. John and Heidi. This time each day, we talk about a thing called your moment of duh. And this is a really, really dumb one. An ethics panel found probable cause against a Florida mayor accused of soliciting sexual favors from residents in exchange for installing speed bumps in her neighborhood. (laughs) What in the world is going on? In a statement from the Ethics uh, Ethics Commission on Ethics, they found probable cause for Mayor David Stewart. They say he misused his position to attempt to obtain a sexual benefit for himself. He may settle the case or request a hearing before an administrative law judge. He has denied the allegations. He told the the news there inappropriate to commit uh, to comment at this time what his comment is just say i can't comment wow. and they quoted him as that here's my quote i can't say nothing anyway uh the january complaint so this is from a while ago the story isn't quite that old but uh, that's you know it was sent to me maybe a month ago uh the january complaint says that uh this young lady was promised that he would put in speed bumps and if you want those safety measures then you have to you know give me a little something too and uh, it explains the details. I'm just not going there because this wow. is a family show. Thanks for listening to the John and Heidi Show. Every day, approximately 23 U.S. military veterans take their own lives. Big Paws Canine Foundation is helping to decrease that number, providing service and companion dogs to our disabled veterans and first responders injured in the line of duty. Partnering a hero with a specifically trained dog significantly reduces the incidence of suicide, and your support makes all the difference. Find out how you can help our American heroes. Join the pack at BigPawsCanine.com. Time now for fake news or Florida. This is where I dig into the pile of stories that have accumulated over just the last couple of weeks. More and more, Heidi. Holy cow, we got a bunch of them. You got to tell me, though, because I've got some people that are sneaking some fake ones in for me, too. You tell me, is this a real story that happened in the great state of Florida? Or is it one that's been made up by me or one of my conspirators? All righty. All right. Tell me, Heidi, fake news or Florida? A Tampa Bay contractor faked his own death to avoid paying his customers back for renovations that he never performed. Fake news or Florida? Florida. True story. That is absolutely true. A contractor pretended that he died, sent everybody a death notice because he didn't want to pay back for renovations that he never did. That's a bad idea. <laughs> so, creepers. yeah, don't There's do that. There's all kinds of interesting people. There's in this a lot world. of weird people that do a lot of weird things. So, please don't do those things. If you do, we might talk about you right here on Fake News or Florida. John and Heidi. This portion of the John and Heidi Show is brought to you by the John and Heidi Show. That sounds kind of funny, but it's true. Go to your local radio station and ask them to start carrying the John and Heidi Show. Here's the best part. They can carry the show for free. They play a couple commercials, but it doesn't cost them anything every month. So if you know a radio station that could use a little bit of help, send them our way. 
send them to johnandheidyshow.com. Again, johnandheidyshow.com. We would love to do a radio program in your community. Then you could listen to the podcast and listen to us on the radio. John and Heidi. We always like to wrap things up around here with good news, and I think this is an adorable cool fun story and it's definitely some good news uh do you like the good news i do should we keep Very doing much. good news we should definitely absolutely keep doing should keep news. doing good news because it does it's, it's a nice a, change of pace yeah because we talk about a lot of not so good things on the show we try to make sure that it's still always family friendly and sometimes that's tough the subject matter of some of the stories are so mm-hmm. bad i don't even read them but i try to at least you know steer through the other ones uh, as nicely as possible. But this one, it's all good. When Duchess Megan accepted a macaroni necklace from a young fan, he was flooded with orders. Do you see this adorable young man here? Aww. Look at that little guy. And there's a little handmade sign that says, I made you a necklace. Aww. Duchess Megan can look fantastic in just about anything she wears. And she enthusiastically wore a macaroni necklace that was made for her by a six-year-old fan. And now he has been inundated with orders. Gavin Hazelwood insisted on staying home from school so he could see Prince Harry and Duchess Meghan on their Australian tour. As a means of welcoming the royal couple to his home of Melbourne, he covered some dinosaur-shaped macaroni in gold paint and strung them into a ribbon and made a sign that said, I made you a necklace. How cute is and that? he got her attention, and she put the necklace on, and he has a website where people are buying, <laughs> with a little help from mom and dad, buying these macaroni necklaces at $20 a piece now. Whoa! Yeah, that sounds like it's expensive, but here's the cool thing. All of his earnings, he is giving, he's donating them to a stillborn research program uh, to cause as close to him because... Uh, he had a sister that was stillborn in 2014. So hmm. something that really matters a lot to him. How cool is that? That's pretty cool. It's a great, it was a good story, but that just made it even better. Yeah. Didn't it? It was very cool. Get me all choked up here. I what a know cool you thing. are. You're so I just, funny. I just love stories like that. I've got a link to this story. If you want to get choked up as well, you can feel that little lump in your throat. <laughs> It's in the show notes under good news at johnandheidyshow.com. Time to say goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, Heidi. Goodbye, everybody. Have a great Monday. Thank you for listening to The John and Heidi Show.